But below the surface of Zapata's vast swamps lives one of Cuba's oldest, most iconic creatures. One that once lurked throughout the Caribbean, but is now found only here in its last refuge. The Cuban crocodile. The Cuban croc shares the swamp with its larger cousin, the American crocodile. But what it lacks in size, it makes up for with a notoriously aggressive temperament. Among the fastest crocodiles in the world, the Cuban croc has evolved feet with less webbing to enable powerful bursts of speed. Known as the pearly crocodile because of its yellow and black coloring, the croc has powerful jaws for crushing its prey. Turtles, crabs, and fish. It's best known for jumping out of the water to snatch small mammals from overhanging trees. Cuban crocs once ranged all the way to the Cayman Islands and the Bahamas, but overhunting and competition for habitat have now confined them to Cuba. As few as 3,000 animals now hang on to survival in Zapata Swamp. Roberto Toby Ramos is Cuba's leading authority on the Cuban croc. For over 30 years, Toby has navigated the waterways of Zapata on a quest to understand these ancient reptiles. The Cuban crocodiles prefer the freshwater marshes deep inside the swamp. Toby's team has to wait for the summer rainy season when the water is high enough to access their nesting grounds. With only the most basic tools, they're just beginning to uncover the mysteries of the world's rarest crocodile. Gorilo cubano realmente se desconocía casi totalmente. Lo único que hemos hecho es tratar de dar respuesta a las preguntas básicas de la ecología. ¿Dónde están? ¿Cuántos son? El éxito re reproductivo, las relaciones que existen, hábitat. No creo que lo más importante es saber el número de animales, sino cuál es la tendencia de la población. O sea, si esa población está decreciendo, se mantiene estable o está incrementándose. The team heads deep into the muddy mangroves to conduct field surveys on the swamp's feistiest inhabitants. Macho. El cocodrilo cubano se considera una de las especies más agresivas. En cualquier momento es peligroso porque la naturaleza le dio muchos dientes. Y, y si se lo dieron fue para algo, ¿no? Uno tiene su cuidado, ¿no? También. Y el conocimiento, la experiencia de, de los animales. Pero bueno, a cualquiera lo muerde. Un metro. 1.15. Uno 
Toby and his team are conducting a study detailing the physical differences between the rhombifer or Cuban crocodile and the American acutis species. Medimos las filas ventrales, que son estas, las filas dorsales, y también le contamos los dientes mandibulares, porque el acutus tiene el, el mayor diente mandibular. Cuban crocs can live for up to 75 years and grow up to 11 feet long. Toby believes this specimen is a juvenile male. While the team takes their measurements, the crocs patients appears to be wearing thin. But one final procedure reveals a surprise. La forma de censar que este como un cocodrilo grande, uno lo censa manualmente. Si fuera macho, sacara el pene. Esta hembra no. The croc is a female. She is then subjected to one final indignity. She's marked to avoid recapturing her during the rest of the study. It's a low-tech but effective operation, with the team's imagination unconfined by economics. La conservación en Cuba es muy difícil. ¿Por qué? Porque la investigación en cualquier campo lleva medios, lleva financiamiento. Nosotros los cubanos, por suerte, como tenemos pocas cosas, hacemos igual que hicieron los naturalistas de cualquier parte del mundo. A nosotros hacemos los estudios hasta donde nos da nuestra capacidad y hasta donde da lo que tenemos. While the population of Cuban crocs appears stable for now, new pressures still threaten their numbers. American and Cuban crocodiles are encroaching on each other's territories, mating and producing a hybrid species. Poachers target the crocs for hides and meat, and more and more tourists come to Zapata each year. Now, with the possibility of the U.S. embargo lifting, can the swamp and its inhabitants survive a sudden invasion of American tourists? <laughs>